In the early 1900s, to ensure vaccines and pharmaceuticals were free from bacterial contamination, countless rabbits were injected with pharmaceuticals and then tested for changes in their body temperature. In 1956, however, an American scientist, Fred Bang, observed a peculiar phenomenon in the blue blood of the horseshoe crab. Namely, when horseshoe crab blood encounters bacterial endotoxins, it solidifies and clumps together, resembling jelly. Scientists have been harnessing the unique properties of horseshoe crab blood for pharmaceutical applications. In 1977, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized its use for medical purposes. Consequently, over 500,000 horseshoe crabs are harvested annually, with their blood valued at around $13,500 per liter. But what is the secret behind horseshoe crab blood? Vicious science. Today, we'll focus on the mysteries of the blue blood of the horseshoe crab. First, let's explore how horseshoe crab blood is collected. The horseshoe crab's vascular system is distributed within its hard shell, with the heart at the system's center. When the blood is collected, the horseshoe crab is securely restrained, and a syringe is inserted at the joint between the cephalothorax and abdomen to draw blood directly from the heart. As a result, blue blood flows into the collection bottle. Unlike humans, who have red blood due to the reddish blood pigment, horseshoe crab's blood is blue because of hemocyanin, a pigment that turns blue upon contact with oxygen. While the horseshoe crab's blue blood is crucial in vaccine development, it is often mistakenly thought to be effective against viruses. In fact, horseshoe crab blood is not effective in combating viruses. Instead, it's used for detecting contamination or toxicity in vaccines. More specifically, it is used to identify bacterial endotoxins in pharmaceutical products. Humans are susceptible to diseases caused by bacteria through two types of toxins, exotoxins and endotoxins. Exotoxins are disease-causing proteins secreted by bacteria, whereas endotoxins are toxins embedded in the bacterial cell membrane. While exotoxins can be neutralized through sterilization, Endotoxins are released during bacterial death and decay, making the sterilization process itself potentially toxic. For pharmaceuticals administered via injection, it is crucial to eliminate endotoxins. Before discovering horseshoe crab blood's properties, the rabbit pyrogenic test was the primary method. This test involved directly injecting rabbits with a drug and monitoring changes in their body temperature. However, this method was not only time-consuming and inefficient, but it also relied on the rabbit's in vivo reaction, which could be influenced by many variables. Amid these constraints, the discovery of the coagulation phenomenon in horseshoe crab blood, which solidifies into a jelly-like substance in the presence of bacterial endotoxin, was a breakthrough. This led to the development of new methods for detecting endotoxins. The coagulation reaction of horseshoe crab blood to bacterial endotoxins is not only a defense mechanism that has enabled their survival for hundreds of millions of years, but it also proves invaluable to humans. This method of detecting endotoxins is known as the Limulus amoebocyte lysate test. Owing to its ability to rapidly detect even low concentrations of endotoxins, the LAL test has become a staple for pharmaceutical companies worldwide. Given their significance to the industry, horseshoe crabs are carefully managed to prevent extinction. When their blood is collected, only about 30% of the total volume is taken, and the crabs are then released back into their habitat. However, during the blood collection process, between 10 to 30 percent of horseshoe crabs perish. Additionally, some crabs may lose their ability to navigate, and the reproductive capacity of females can be compromised as well. As a result, although horseshoe crabs have survived from the Paleozoic era to the present, they are increasingly being recognized as a species at the risk of extinction. Furthermore, the pharmaceutical industry is not the sole threat to horseshoe crabs. They are also extensively used as bait and food in the fishing industry. Moreover, coastal development is destroying their spawning grounds, contributing to a decline in their population. 
the continued reliance on horseshoe crab blood under these circumstances has long been recognized as both unethical and ecologically unsustainable. In response, scientists have employed genetic recombinant technology to develop an alternative reagent known as recombinant factor C, which is already being utilized. Although there are ongoing concerns about the efficacy and reliability of recombinant factor C, and most companies currently still use horseshoe crab blood, RFC offers the benefit of not being animal-derived. Its effectiveness and stability are being increasingly acknowledged, and its use in endotoxin detection is growing. Thanks to these technological advancements, scientists are hopeful that in the near future, the need for horseshoe crab blood could be eliminated. That's good to know, isn't it? And that concludes our video on the fascinating blue blood of horseshoe crabs. Did you know that horseshoe crabs are not true crabs, but are more closely related to spiders and scorpions? For a deeper dive into horseshoe crab's anatomy and internal structure, be sure to watch our previous videos. If you find our content interesting, please consider subscribing to our channel. That is all from Fishy Science. Thank you for watching.